Good evening, everyone. My name is Taronda Richardson. Um, I currently serve Appetite for Change, a North Minneapolis-based nonprofit that uses food as a tool to help with building change. And within that, uh, I have the privilege to lead an amazing group of teenagers uh, in a program called YTOP, which stands for Youth Training and Opportunity Program. Um, if you could envision your first paid job um, taking form in an urban ag uh, you know, environment and couple that with a bunch of you know, experiential learning, uh, opportunities, uh, mentoring and, and coaching and such. And that's really kind of a part of what I'm responsible for. Where uh, previously we were bringing uh, community into our cafe after hours. Um, currently we're unable to do that. And as such, we've had to pivot and kind of come up with a new way to serve community. And so currently we are distributing meal, meal kits. Uh, if you can envision uh, you know, receiving all the ingredients you need and recipes to come up with a delicious, healthy recipe for either, either a vegetarian or you know, someone that does eat meat and really trying new flavors and, and really uh, using this as a new tool to be able to still engage with community. Um, so our meal kit distribution uh, project really is something that was um, created out of a need in response to the uprising uh, in our community uh, following the unfortunate murder of George Floyd. Uh, around that time, you know, our uh, organization is located on West Broadway, a predominantly African-American community. Um, again, our organization prior to COVID uh, was really um, becoming popular for inviting community into um, our space, our cafe after hours, but unfortunately we weren't able to do that. And so we realized, well, ultimately, um, the greatest opportunity is to be able to bring this program into the homes of the, young, of the people we serve. And so out of that, again, we literally uh, sat down and said, okay, well, how, how does this all work, right? We have um, urban ag, abundance of produce, and a real need. And so we saw an opportunity to kind of repurpose those items that would have otherwise been sold. And again, uh, we are now putting the produce that the teens are growing over the course of the summer into these meal kit boxes. Uh, but before I talk a little bit more about the meal kit boxes, I want to share some of what my summer was like uh, as we all were making an adjustment to this new kind of normal, whatever that is. Um, we found such peace and solitude um, in our gardens. And I can think of a number of days where um, you know, everyone was still trying to figure out, am I safe? Can I go outside? Um, what does socially distanced, you know, work even look like? Uh, but we found um, a tremendous amount of solitude in our, in our local gardens. And so I'm thankful that uh, we were able to offer that for a lot of our young people who, you know, had been displaced with all that was happening with school, um, you know, having to make, a, you know, a crash course, uh, landing into virtual learning and really having to check and adjust, which was quite difficult. Um, these meal kits also represent a way to ensure that community gets the same access and even a little bit better. So within these meal kits, um, I've discovered um, some of these items you couldn't buy in a grocery store. So um, they're coming locally sourced from local butchers and farmers, and they're actually high quality, which is something that we're really, really um, proud of. Um, so with this project, uh, it's sponsored by Local Crate, um, funded by uh, United Way, and we also are working with a team of drivers from DoorDash. And so just earlier today, as I uh, was getting things set up for our Monday run, within about an hour and a half time span, we have about 25 different DoorDash drivers pull up. And then the second half of the day includes um, kind of one-offs, people who maybe want to come and pick up their boxes. And we are receiving just a tremendous amount of feedback from community about just the quality of the ingredients and um, the well laid out recipes and all of the instructions. And again, um, I think the dignity piece, you know, something I'm passionate about is a belief that, you know, food is not a privilege. We all deserve access to, to food. And we all know that food is a fuel, you know, to help you be, you know, thriving and to live and to do your very, very best. And so that's something we all deserve. And um, I've been working in North Minneapolis the past 15 years in a couple of other capacities, including running uh, the North Community YMCA, where, again, I had a youth-only uh, facility where, you know, every day we would watch children arrive after school and sometimes they were hungry and so I've seen different meal programs and I, I definitely understand the impact that that makes in community oh. and this sort of access is extremely important. I know there are so many different things that uh, I know as, as Huda and, and Sheila are talking about also, it's about co-creating things in communities so we actually do have deeper roots of, of multiple players connected to deal with the intersectional issues that we do have. 
So I'm curious, Taronda, since there are so many players involved, it feels like, you know, one mindset is that there's like competitive missions and people stepping on each other's toes and taking credit for things or figuring out how to fund things or where the revenue is going. Sort of how has that worked with all of the different people that you're involved with? Kind of is, can you explain a little bit about how that's go how that's going? I can. I think um, ultimately our greatest opportunity lies in our capacity to understand. These are not mutually exclusive, you know, concepts. It's one community, it's one world, and we really each kind of have a lane that we all serve. And so I know myself um, during this really um, just, you know, unprecedented time had to be really creative. And I definitely found myself reaching out to community partners um, way across the river. Uh, reaching people in other communities. And that's something we should be doing more of, you know, when I think about uh, what it means to serve community, and I'm definitely a servant leader, I have always felt that um, our obligation is to do our best and to contribute to the greater cause. Uh, we're not in competition with one another. I look forward to getting to know both these ladies, you know, and looking for ways to partner and further those collaborations and experiences. And ultimately, we all have to acknowledge, we do have limits when it comes to capacity. And so I think funders appreciate the way we can show that we are collaborating and working together, ultimately, I think, to have a greater impact. What is it that readers or, or viewers can, uh, can do to support what you're doing? I love that question. I, of course, you know, prepped ahead and wanted to say, okay, today, what is the most urgent need? Um, but I'm also, you know, one who likes to give. I believe most importantly, a person should find a cause that they're passionate about. Um, I, of course, would love it to be Appetite for Change. And if that is the case, I would say, please follow us on social media to keep up with what we're doing. Um, I would say visit our website. We're at appetiteforchange.mn.org. Um, and also just really think about ways that you can personally contribute something. You know, we all have certain subjects or, you know, uh, things that pull at our heartstrings, things that we're passionate about. So ultimately, I really believe that people should get involved, find ways to volunteer and care about community and find ways to ensure that at the end of any day, uh, they say, always try to leave the world just a little bit better than you found it. 